Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and countering the effect of the population. It looks like the the votes, if you want to trust the uh, pundits and the people that are counting the expected votes, Obama's way ahead of, of uh, Romney. Romney's campaign is being run by children and idiots. And uh, if we simply teach the public about what kind of a second term Obama will do, it'll be a green agenda. And your book, Plundered, which compares the progressive movement, which Obama is leading, uh, for the uh, Democratic Party and for the globalists, and the idea of a green agenda, we need a green economy with uh, closed coal fire generators, uh, increased cost of energy, uh, destroyed businesses and industry that rely on energy, uh, incredible increases in home utility bills, uh, unemployment, and of course the green agenda ties into Agenda 21. These are all very, very bad. And the problem is that the level of ignorance of the public is mind blowing. Um, your latest book, of course, is Plundered How Progressive Ideology is Destroying America, Dr. Michael Kaufman. Let's focus on what a second term of Obama will look like and how bad it will be if we don't get this truth out so people do not elect Obama. Yes, it's really a sad state. Uh, I never dreamed in my wildest imaginations two years ago, uh, Bill, that he would ever even try to run for the second term, let alone even be successful. But as Rush Limbaugh said this morning, basically he is a pathological liar. And I mean he really ripped into to Obama, uh, basically calling him every name in the book. And he is. If you read my book, uh, Rest or Plundered, what you will see is basically a systematic uh, destruction of this country based on his ideology of progressivism. And, of course, Nancy Pelosi and, and Reid and all the rest of them are basically in the same camp. They're communists. But they, that's not the worst thing. You know, having a communist is one thing, but if it was pragmatic, at least you can survive. What they are, basically, they've created their own basic reality. Uh, they live in uh, the dream world, and they base any, anything that's touching with real reality they do they reject and you cannot survive in a dream world that they're creating right now and one of those things is basically the the uh, green agenda of having alternative energy basically by 20, 2020 for instance of about 40 percent of all energy use and right now it's less than two percent how in the world are they going to get to 20 percent within a few years it's just mind-blowing and yet they're convinced they can do it great britain tried it germany's tried it italy tried it spain's tried it and they all have failed and all are pulling out of this alternative energy right now on a, on a massive a massive scale it just doesn't the te- current technology that we have just will not support that kind of an agenda it just won't and it's driving these economies directly into the ground uh, people in britain for instance over the first year and a half or about a year ago their increase in electricity costs at home home energy went up by seventy percent with all the wind farms and so forth around great britain and it's still it's not very reliable it's horribly reliable until we get the storage problem resolved uh, for energy and so forth at that massive scale. I mean, we can do it kind of in our homes and so forth, but you cannot do it on a massive scale at this point. Promising things in the future, but they're not here yet. Exactly. Now, the other thing that's going on is that there really is a conspiracy against the idea of oil. Now, if tomorrow, let's say we use this theoretically, all our vehicles could be run on you know, solar electric or some other form of energy, energy from a vacuum like the Pierce Aero car from Nikola Tesla. It still wouldn't remove our dependency on oil or no. oil-based products. The other thing is, that, and there's a book out that I'm going to try to get Dr. Jerome Corsier talking about on the program called The Great Oil Conspiracy. Uh, it is called How the U.S. Government and Hid the Nazi Discovery of Abiotic Oil from, the, uh, from America. Now, this is how bad this is and from the American people. The reason is that the Russians knew abiotic oil. One of my good friends, uh, Connie Musso, and her husband are both oil engineers. He's one of the senior engineers for, for uh, the major insurance company out of Britain. And they're in Kazakhstan. Uh, he's in Kazakhstan back and forth and they're in London. And what they told me is that everybody knows as oil engineers for half a century that oil re- returns to the oil wells. In fact, one of my oil engineer uh, patients back in, in Denver when I practiced there in close in 2004, he told me, he said, look, we go back to these oil fields where there's pumpers in the back of ranchers' yards, and the, the oil field's been closed two, three, five years, ten years, and it's all filled up again. 
The fact is abiotic oil is oil. It's not from ferns and dinosaurs 112 million years ago. It's created in the bowels of the earth. And we're always going to have require some oil because it's a petrochemical. It's feedstock for plastics. It creates chemicals. It does all kinds of things. And the earth has a virtually limitless supply of this. The fact is that even if we had... And I want to put solar panels on our home. The new, the one that I'm looking at is the solar uh, things to get off the grid because I don't think the government's protecting the grid. They should decentralize it. They should have natural gas everywhere. They should be using more propane, which is a byproduct of oil refinery. Uh, yes, they can do hydrofracking, but they shouldn't do it in areas where they're going to damage the oil, the, the water table. But there's lots of areas where Obama literally has not allowed licensure in the Gulf of Mexico and safe areas, but he's allowed the Chinese, I think, what, 60, 80 miles off the Florida yeah, coast 60, to be doing... 60 miles. Off the, off the coast to be doing massive exploration without any safety oversight from the U.S. government in international waters off our Florida coast, doing massive exploration. Obama's policies are designed to destroy this nation. It's designed to make us oil dependent when we actually, in 2011, with things like the launch of the Liberty Rig up in Alaska and Prudhoe Bay, we have enough oil, enough gas, enough coal, that we are literally the Saudi Arabians of the planet. And yes, we want alternative energy. Yes, we want to have solar and other things. We want backups. But those things are are in development. And eventually we'll have tokamak fusion reactors and we'll have plasma distribution lines that don't require power substations to boost the energy. And we'll have all of these fancy technologies. But that'll take decades. What Obama wants to do is put the brakes on the economy by closing coal fire plants and throwing more of our industry non-competitively over to China and these other countries that aren't going to listen to this, not going to sign on to the Kyoto Accord, and not going to listen to the foolishness about CO2 as a death gas, when in fact they are putting out pollution, which we could stop by simply making trade agreements to say, you need scrubbers on your smokestacks, China. But instead of dealing with real environmental issues, Obama and his bunch of greedy maniacs are actually trying to force carbon credits down our throat. That if you're going to do things, you have to buy carbon credits, and it's going to kill industry in California. <laughs> the laws here in California are nuts. They want to start it literally in November of this year. This nutty governor, Jerry Brown, instead of uh, preempting this law or delaying it or saying we need to come bring this back to kind of reevaluate, they're going to force carbon credits down our throat in California, already run by a bunch of Democratic progressive yahoos, is going to destroy the economy here in California, which should be, it's the eighth largest economy on the planet. It's yeah. crazy what they're doing. And you know, the EU right now, basically their carbon credit program that they've been having over the last three, three years or so, three and a half years, is dead. Uh, it, there's, there's basically no cost in carbon credits anymore because it doesn't work. Basic, and what was amazing, even the last year they were saying that 90% or 95% of all carbon credits are created by through corruption. It's, it's really a whole... Well, yeah, the carbon system. credit masters get, get the money, like, uh, like Igor. You know, yeah. it's just disgusting. This this doesn't solve anything. The real gases that destroy the ozone layer, hydrogen, sulfur, and sulfur dioxide get the upper atmosphere. As you say, you can't float a brick in a pool. Chlorofluorocarbons do not destroy the upper atmosphere. CO2 does not cause global warming. Global warming is caused when the sun gets hotter or when the oceans get warmer because of under-oceanic volcanism. Period. That's yeah. the end of it. And this idea that, you know, what we really should be worried about is things like sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide, which contribute a tiny portion to the amount contributed mainly by volcanism on the land and under the oceans that are reaching the upper atmosphere along with a weakening magnetic field to destroy our ozone layer so our crops and our benthic layer of oceans are in danger. But instead of dealing with really science, we have idiots that run around and make positive theories and then set up an economic regime on the basis of this for global conspiratorial mastery of the population of Earth, which will vastly reduce the population, destroy industry, and in a byproduct, it'll destroy the environment. It's mind-boggling. It is. When we come back, we're going to talk more about this remarkable book, America Plundered, and what Obama is trying to do. And if people vote for Obama, I can't say God help us, because at that point, we're beyond help. Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report, and uh, we are talking with Dr. Mike Kaufman about the, the your latest book. Of course, is America Plundered. Can you tell us uh, what's happening? 
basically that book exposes the whole agenda from A to Z, um, both in education. I have two chapters on education as to how we've got a dumbed down population, 50% of which basically supports Obama, which I, I don't think there's anything that Obama is doing right now that's even sane, let alone realistic for this country. You could not have picked a better thing, agenda for him to do and implement if you wanted to destroy America than what he's doing. He's literally, and the whole the whole progressive ideology and those who are supporting that are bound and determined. All their writings show this. They want to destroy America and rebuild it in what they thought think is going to be uh, the utopian society. Well, folks, they tried that in the Soviet Union and China, China and a dozen other places over the history of the world, and it never works because it's fundamentally flawed. And this is what I bring out. And the fact that they are basically liars. I mean, the whole doctrine is based on a lie. And they're told basically they can lie, they can cheat, they can do almost anything because they're in a war. They look well, at well, this whole it, thing as that they're in a war against us. Right, and therefore, yeah. It justifies anything that they want to do. Next week we have uh, IQ Al Razuli from uh, an undisclosed location in Britain because he has 26 uh, uh, fatwas against his life for speaking against Islam. But I would consider this a form of environmental taqiyya. Uh, mm -hmm. or, yeah, which is basically lie through your teeth while you, you stab the knife and twist it through their ribs. Uh, that's what it is. The environment. These are enviromaniacs. They're not interested in the environment or saving the whales or the benthic layer of the oceans or the dead zones or the great forests are dying from 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 weakened forests. So now the parasites and pathogens are taking over and destroying the trees and their roots and their rhizomes and pulling the minerals. And you're a forestry expert. What we're seeing is a bunch of wackos that want to use the environment as an issue to get global control of the population and kill most of us. Yes, it's not that the, the rank and file out there are doing this deliberately against us, it's the leadership. The rank and file are just so stupid because they've been not un unintelligent, they're not unintelligent or not at all, but they are deliberately being dumbed down stupid so that they do not recognize a lie when they see it. And, re and they're giving their support to these progressives in the leadership that are basically deliberately trying to use any means they can to destroy America. I, I, it's really, really shocking when you get down to the background information that I provide in this book, how they are doing it, how they basically will turn a lie into the truth and the truth into a lie. Uh, you're seeing it happen right now. Obama's just constantly repeating, well, it wasn't the attacks in the Mideast weren't because of, of terrorism. They were because of this 15-minute uh, thing that was anti uh, on the internet, the, the video that was on the well, internet. There's, there's the, but they, they know it was planned for months. That's why they even gave it yes, an intelligence right. review. So th this is a pile of garbage. And for them to say that, and then they contracted, by the way, we mentioned this before yesterday and today, they contracted Hillary Clinton did with a British protect, uh, security company that said that you can only protect him if you have no bullets. So where were his guards? He couldn't contract to have bullets. So, so basically, well, God knows where his guard was. The only two con people there were not even contracted that died. There were special forces. They were here from San Diego County because they were there for other reasons in the safe house. And the fact is the rest of the people were evacuated. So they purposely let this guy sit out there to become a sacrificial lamb so they could justify further actions, which supports al-Qaeda and these extremists because their idea is the dialectics of alliances with extreme Muslims fits their purposes, at least in the short term. Yes, it does. You cannot deny that because Obama basically has been supporting Islam. You know, Islamists now, ever since he's gotten everything that he has done dealing with Islam, Islam has been heavily biased towards the Islamists. And I cannot believe how the Jews are sitting there and saying Obama's still their man. I mean, it's almost like the Holocaust well, all over I think, again. In I, I, think I, I think it may be starting to shift now that we have a very clear alternative with Romney. I don't agree with a lot of other Romney policies. Right. I think that they need to be tempered, but uh, I think his. Uh, Let's put it this way. I choose Romney over and Ryan over Obama any day. And, of course, uh, I may vote for other candidates, but I think that Romney and Ryan are likely to lose this election if they don't kind of step up and really start going after Obama on so many issues. They don't deal with the consequences of a green agenda with Obama. I don't understand why the people aren't much more aggressive speech writing to deal with these issues because 
Romney has so much ammunition that he can go after. Yes, he does. It's just uh, it's amazing. I mean, if I was the speechwriter, I could sit there for an hour and give him half a dozen ideas that would rip Obama to pieces in the media. And if they, if Romney just kind of brought up these issues and just opened up questions and at, and demanded specific documented answers to those questions, Obama would be sitting there with those teleprompter just you know losing control of his bowel and bladder. I mean, he I really agree. is. He really is dangerous, and he's dangerously stupid on top of being a, what I call a total puppet for the global uh, banks or masters that well, want to use that's this, what I'm, this. That's what I'm wondering, Bill. Is he really that stupid, or is he just being obedient to what they're telling him to do and deliberately throwing the race? I don't know how else you can explain it, because he has, he knows the free market system, backwards and forwards and upside down. He could defend very, that very easily, and he refuses to do that. It's not that he just doesn't. He refuses to do it. You're talking about Romney, yeah. The, the, the fact is we have a situation now where the business of America is not being properly run. We, are, we could be energy independent today. Yes. We could have we could have proper security of our borders today. We could have a, a policy that would deal with rapid access to immigration for people that legally want to come here, both technical and other people who want to work hard, and prevent criminals and other and, and uh, other people other uh, unsurely not getting past our borders. We could make sure that airlines are safe and, and so on. If we profile anybody, especially if they're Muslim, that they come through, they don't just get a terrorist body scan; they get an ultrasound to look for body cavity inserted surgically. In planted bombs uh, we would you know we don't need to be surveilling everybody and finding their GPS coordinates of their cell phone like the FBI are trying to or under Obama or he wants to do an executive order to take over the internet he doesn't want anybody not not kind of worshiping Obama and the regime behind him and these bankers basically they figure well we can't create a new world order unless we crush America we need strong nations around the world. We need a strong China that understands its limits. We need a strong Russia that collaborates on space-based programs so we can deal with nearest objects and the change in the atmosphere and space weather. We need to have nations that collaborate rather than are getting ready for warfare, which is under Obama. We're moving in that direction. Oh, I it's agree. I, I, you sit back and look at this and say there is no reason why we couldn't be energy independent today. If we started to do what we should have done back around 2000, we would be totally 100% energy independent. We would not have to, uh, to depend upon one drop of oil from anywhere else. Now, there would still be free trade and so forth. I wouldn't want to cut that off. So we'd right. still be buying oil and selling oil. But the fact is, we don't have to depend upon the Mideast anymore. It is basically, we have enough oil enough natural gas, enough coal to last us at current market prices today at least 100 years. In the case right. of coal, it's 400 years. Uh, oil will last us about 250 years, but there will be an increase in cost eventually unless a new technology comes along. All right. of these things are within our grasp, and yet our our administrations, Bush before and so forth, have refused to develop this. Well, I shouldn't say Bush. Bush tried to, and he was stopped by the progressives in Congress, stopped dead in his tracks for this kind of development. Obama has had three, or two, I'm sorry, two um, injunctions by the courts of forcing him to actually go and do more drilling and so forth. Yeah, I know. It's amazing, isn't it? It is. Amazing. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, there's a biblical quote that says, My people perish for lack of vision. Well, uh, if you're listening to Romney or the campaign there, the vision you need to give is an America where you say, I'm going to set a goal to 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 set a colony on Mars and have a permanent mining operation in space. I'm going to collaborate with Russia and China and the other great powers like Brazil in terms of developing an international space program for nearest objects in space weather. We would bring in NAWAPA and Credit for America instead of just printing money to loan to banksters while credit contracts. We'd have a policy where we would deal with the nuclear issue and say, look, we have all these reactors ready to have a American-made Fukushima. Why don't we close all these reactors, upgrade the technology, 
because there is an issue, and I mentioned this before, it's called peak oxygen. If we keep destroying the oceans and there's 10,000 dead zones in the oceans that are expanding, now we have it now in the Gulf of Mexico, if we're cutting down the forest for industry and for doing things that are related to international industry, the amount of uh, the carbon oxygen cycle is going to be significantly hampered. And as we dump CO2, it's not a matter that CO2 is a death gas that's causing global warming. It's that the oxygen concentration of the planet at some point in the future, and it could be this century, will start to peak and drop. And it is already dropping in a lot of big cities like Sao Paulo, Brazil, and major other cities. Uh, that peak oxygen level is a very major crisis because the ozone layer will thin with enough oxygen because you need three things, a magnetic field, oxygen, and UV light. We aren't dealing with these issues. And it, it requires an international vision of what we have and, a, and we can build an economy that's not a green economy and an economy that's based on more advanced technology an economy that results in less pollution an economy that allows us to preserve ecosystems rather than thinking well we can't touch them we can't live there uh, the policies of the green agenda and agenda 21 are just disgusting backwards stupid and they don't make us stewards of the earth they make us victims and subject to the planet of that we're somehow a pathogen ready to cause the early death of the, of, of mother earth or gaia absolutely uh, i have no doubt about that whatsoever we are going in exactly the wrong direction in policies that are diametrically opposed to the concept of liberty and wealth creation Property rights, as you and I have talked about in the past, are critical for wealth creation, for prosperity. And yet they're shutting down all property rights. Agenda 21 that we've talked about on the program before is yeah. basically built on the whole concept that the state controls private property rights, just like it does in communist, former communist Russia and China. Uh, and it'll bring us down. It's already bringing us down. We've dropped from about number two on the economic freedom scale of the world to numbers 18 just in the last 10 years it's really really plummeting and we have lost four to five thousand dollars income producing per family i mean it's right in front of our noses why can't we see it yeah it's amazing uh that people don't realize that if obama gets in the second term here's the consequences on the economic we have the fiscal cliff and it's likely that we're going to have gridlock again with republicans still in relative control of either the house or the senate and Obama in power, which means that things won't get done, good or bad. But what will happen is by executive order, Obama will push policies in or rulemaking that will bring in a green agenda, not deal with the fiscal cliff that's coming, not deal with international uh, move towards war in the Middle East. So the price of oil will go right through the ceiling, but we're not preparing our own country to be oil independent. So we're going to see industry further destroyed, economy further destroyed, and the environment destroyed and a possible danger that they're going to strike the Bashir reactor that will have a massive release of radiation on top of the Fukushima Daiichi disaster. And the magma chamber of Mount Fuji is filling, so the cheaper reactors along that same fault line that connects the Sendai area with Mount Fuji are likely to be struck as well. So we're heading toward a cataclysm here, a literally I call an extinction-level event that's, that's fueled by stupidity, ignorance, and narcissistic arrogance. And Obama is not the man that should be in power. He, we need a reasonable person that's intelligent, that steps forward and does the right thing, that collaborates with people and doesn't beat the war drums or allow the Israelis to push us to do something stupid. And we aren't dealing with real environmental issues while we want to put carbon credits. When it failed in Europe, why are we doing it now when they'd already failed in Europe? It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. But that is the progressive ideology for you. Fant increasingly, Sweden, for instance, formerly the, the probably the most socialist nation in Europe up until about 10 years ago, finally realized that they were going to go bankrupt. They were, they were going to fall over the cliff just like we're approaching right now. And they made a major decision to switch from the Keynesian economic model to the Austrian economic model. Not there totally yet, but nonetheless, and they cut down on their size and scope of government, their taxes and everything else, gave big tax relief and so forth to their industry and, and private business and that type of thing. And folks, they are not suffering from this recession. I call it a depression, but they, everybody else calls it a recession. They're not suffering at all. They have 2 to 4% greater gross domestic product than you that we have here in this country. And they used to be down at the bottom of the heap. And that's less than 10 years. They turned that around to be in where they are right now. So it really is showing very clearly that the, pro 
the, the road that we're on, this Keynesian belief system in the economy, just does not work. It has never worked. And, I mean, there's a lot of things you can go wrong with an economy, but your Keynesian philosophy will always take you down the wrong path. Of course, and the West, idea that... an Austrian type of an economy, we're going to fail, and fail miserably. Well, the thing is that... Economy comes from individuals and small business that becomes medium and larger business that has new ideas to create right. goods and services to provide for other people that can be exported to other countries. And what we're doing now is the exact opposite. We have an inflatocracy where Obama thinks if we just run the printing presses and spray them down so they get too hot and just put everybody on the dole and, well, we're not going to have real industry here. We're going to just tax everybody to the death so that there's no real dispensable income even of the people that could invest in business. And we make the uh, the, the tax rate so high that corporate business doesn't want to be in, involved in America. It just it kills the country. It says, it okay, we don't mind, we don't mind uh, more factories going to Europe and uh, going to Asia. We don't mind the fact that we're going to have a green agenda shackle us so we can't uh, develop industry. And they're not really going to reduce the pollution, which can be done very you know, easily. For example, if you, uh, if you put special tax breaks for people that wanted to have uh, propane-style cars or natural gas-style cars, uh, if you gave real breaks to people that wanted to, uh, to set up you know, alternative energy for their homes so they could reduce the load on the grid, if you gave real breaks uh, to, to local communities so they could actually have their own break up the distribution of the power grid because the grid's going to go. I mean, the fact is we're moving into next year, the next couple of years, where coronal mass ejections are probably going to knock out a chunk of the grid all over the planet. And our power here in California is very, very poor. Uh, we're always having power blackouts. It may last anywhere from a few hours the other night to, you know, three or four hours. We've had three blackouts of anywhere from two to four hours in the past month and a half. Yeah, and, yeah. And then the one last year, by the way, on September 8th, we had people fighting in the stores within three to four hours for ice, literally fist fights with police trying to have them to draw their guns because people were fist fighting because they didn't want their food to rot in their refrigerators. You know, this country is not being run like a real business or a real country. It's being run by a bunch of yahoos that are just trying to get as much as they can stuffed into their pockets while the rest of us go to hell. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. And I don't know how else we're going to, to change this around unless we begin to expose them and basically show, as Limbaugh did today, basically that they're a bunch of liars. I mean, you cannot, you can just, you can, it's at that point now where we can't be nice. We have to take the gloves off. They are a bunch of liars. They will right. do anything, say anything, and so forth to get what they want, which is re-election in this case right now. But basically, they don't have, re they cannot connect reality. One of the things that caused me to write this book, Plundered, was the fact that there were psychological studies done by early psychiatrists back over a hundred years ago, folks. Folks, and they identified what they weren't called progressives then, but they identified that movement. And I realized that they could not connect to reality even back in those days. That's why Europe went socialistic and, and communistic and so forth. Karl Marx picked this up, and oh, you just go right on down the list. This is where it all started. Uh, basically, it's been like this for well over a hundred years. Well, really, since Jean Jacques Rousseau in the mid 17th, uh, uh, 18th century. And they have just been building and building upon this unreal system of governance. The Soviet Union, of course, collapsed. They couldn't sustain it. And, and we're heading in the same direction. And, it's, and they're blind. They cannot ever say no to what their ideology tells them to do. Yeah, it's amazing. AmericaPlunder.com's website. Dr. Mike Kaufman. Welcome back, and uh, Dr. Mike Kaufman. Uh, the uh, the situation is getting uh, more extreme, as I say. If we just kind of what I call imagineer the timeline of where we're going, and I say, here's what's likely to happen: we're going to get enough to disgruntled both Democrats and Republicans that don't like Obama there that we're going to have gridlock. Obama will continue to try to pass executive orders, including trying to take over the Internet and force his green agenda. He'll continue to try to appoint further justices to the Supreme Court that will be more, more obscene uh, moves like justice uh, uh, of the Supreme Court that passed Obamacare. We're going to see um, the uh, very high likelihood of an Israeli preemptive attack without full integration of their military and air force with ours. 
So we will be sort of picking up the pieces after the disaster and being hauled into a conflict that Russia and China will be making extremely nasty calls to America, threatening us because we allow the Israelis to do a preemptive attack on Syria and Iran. We're probably going to see the Strait of Hormuz close, technically, uh, if not in actual fact, which is why they're doing an operation right now. It's a 12-day operation. I think we're halfway through it with 25 nations in the Persian Gulf with these mine-sweeping operations. I've been told from my experts that it'll take six to nine months minimum to sweep the mines if the conflict stops. And the first thing that will happen, the insurance carriers will shut it off, the oil price will go through the ceiling, and our world economy, despite the fact they keep on saying it's a recession, it's a depression, stupid, should be the term. We are in a depression. We're not in a recession. We have negative growth. They're just using all kinds of printing money to make it look like we're not in a depression because the stock market looks good. It's like pumping blood into a dead person to make them look pink. Uh, they still are dead. Yes. You know, you can pump oxygenated blood into a dead person without a pulse, and they'll look really pink even if it's flowing all over the floor and you're up to your ankles in blood. It doesn't make any difference. The person's still dead. And what they're going to do, basically, what I see under Obama is we're going to see more and more cities and states go bankrupt in the next four years. We're going to see America hauled into another evil war in the Middle East that's going to make no sense whatsoever. And we're going to have lack of respect by Russia and China that are going to threaten, as the other day, the senior Chinese literally threatened, saying, what do you want, Los Angeles or Taiwan, after we tracked and followed the submarine in one of our uh, following boats actually got pulled into a Chinese port after it got caught in uh, some kind of lines. And they basically said, do you want Los Angeles or Taiwan? We aren't even getting respect from these nations anymore because we have no, a weak president. We have a weak president who doesn't know how to operate in a position of power and strength and say, you return our boat right now or else. You know, yep. you don't go in and start threatening us, Los Angeles. What do you, what do you want us to do? Put it on, on, on extreme notice that the fact is that China is not being restrained. Uh, they're, they're trying to become the bully of the South China Sea. They're now even fighting with, with Japan over islands that have been known for 500 years have been Jap- Jap- Chinese, Japanese territory because they think there might be oil near them in a very desolate area of the, the space between China and Japan, which has always been Jap- Japanese islands. This is getting way out of control, and we have a weak president that's basically going to get us into what I call a shooting war, an economic depression, and a green agenda in the middle of it, which will compound these problems to the point where our population will be starving, states will be going bankrupt, and don't worry about Obamacare or anything else. They won't be able to afford anything. We're going to see, uh, you know, and I'm not totally pleased with the policies of Romney either. I don't think austerity fascism in the middle of a, of a disaster like this is really the solution to the problem. Right. I agree. I, I agree. Romney is not the solution. However, he is not as bad as Obama. And no, 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 no comparison. Shot. We'll have another opportunity to start correcting this if, if Romney gets in this. If, I think if so. Romney gets to be president. If Obama wins, I don't think there's any recovery possible. Well, he's, he's, already, he, he's already said that he will basically have flexibility to Medvedev, which yes. means he'll do what the hell he pleases. And because he's such a narcissistic socio-psychopath, He'll basically put in a green agenda. He'll build down our nuclear forces 90% to the level of Pakistan. He'll basically stymie our oil industry so that we, in our coal industries, by shutting more plants and taxing us with, with carbon taxes to the point where our industry will shut. Uh, and uh, he'll continue printing money like a printing presses, which eventually will cause it to collapse. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I, I see Europe going down. I think there's uncontrolled events that he can't stop. And a shooting war in the Middle East is going to get a lot more nasty than, than uh, he thinks. You know, the, the fact that they recently had a Russian submarine in the Gulf of Mexico uh, that literally was a nuclear-capable submarine is a little concerning. You have a nuclear-capable submarine in our Gulf of Mexico. Like, what the hell is he doing there? Yep. I, I totally agree with you. And the fact that he is operating, operating in the Twilight Zone it's just beyond belief. We really have a major problem. And unfortunately, Bill, what has happened is that we now have two generations of students that have graduated from our progressive school, public school systems, and they don't see anything wrong with what's going on because that's all they have been taught. And boy, do we have an education process had a, us if we're going to ever save this nation. It's had really, an educational really lobotomy. 
They've had an educational lobotomy done. Their common sense has been excised surgically. The neurons that are capable of rational thinking. Jobs are created by creative people and businesses, small, medium, and large. They're not created yep. by government. Government simply literally tries to to abscond with resources to tax people and to redirect money and redistribute it. The fact is, big government's bad. The government should perform the minimum amount of laws so it's not ridiculous and should have the minimum number of rules so things like glass steagall should be put back in so we can control our finances and it's not a, you know, a casino. I've often wondered about that, Bill. Why didn't they just... glass steagall was the, camel, the straw that broke the camel's back. It worked for 50 years. Why didn't they reinstitute that instead of creating this Dodd-Frank uh, horrendous uh, financial reform act? I mean, it's, they're basically well, uh, implementing the global agenda with that act. Uh, you know, Carol Quigley back yeah. said back in 1966 that the global cartel, the banking cartel, is going to control everything, and they basically, this Dodd-Frank Financial Reform Act has given the Federal Reserve the, the ability to do that. I just cannot yeah. believe them. Well, I'll tell you, here's my analysis. I believe that the Federal Reserve is a precursor for the mark of the beast. Yeah. And what ha- right now, 87% of all the dollars, both printed and electronic, on the planet are U.S. dollars. It, with the uh, QE3, which is infinite QE3, they're going to print at least one to two to three trillion dollars in the next one to two years which means that within a couple of years, 95% of the currency on the planet will be U.S. dollars, electronic or otherwise. Eventually, the idea is to create an electronic virtual balloon, i.e., the dollar will then be exchangeable with all other currencies, including the yuan, etc., but it will be a world currency. It will be biometric, and you will not be able to buy and sell save that you have the mark. And uh, that's where we're going. We're going toward yep. a system where Obama is instituting steps to bring about a so-called false peace in the Middle East after a period of crisis, to bring in a biometric green currency, which is the Agenda 21, and to bring about a policy that destroys the nation states, including America, so the globalist bankers will run everything. Yep. I can't deny that. I, I really can't. That's what they have said they were going to do way back in the early part of the 20th century. Uh, Carol Quigley basically said that in his book, his 1,300 pages of book, Tragedy and Hope. And uh, he had access to their records for two years. I mean, it's not like... Well, if you're evil, evil, this is what you do. You, this is, if you're evil and you have no concern about going to heaven or hell or whatever, this is what you do. If you believe in the, in the God of New, which is destruction, hey, you're going to just do the best and worst you can here in this realm because this is all there is, then they're going to move forward. And that's what they do. And they kiss this, the, the, literally they, they kiss the sacred stone of the goddess of New when they take their oaths and the coffins at the, at the crypt for the skull and bones. That means John Kerry, who's lying and supporting Obama, and Bill Clinton, who's another high-level Rhodes Scholar, another Mason. Yep. And we have, you know, it's just disgusting. And, of course, what people don't understand is you don't get into high-level of politics in any nation unless you're a high-level Muslim, or sorry, a high-level Mason of some form or other. And That's right. Uh, you know, and, and by the way, there's more Muslim Masons in the world than there is of any other and all other religions. Although it's really surprising, even in the Iran, the conversion to Christianity is setting record numbers. I'm not saying that's high record numbers, because obviously you take your life into your own hands if you make that conversion. But there are many, many uh, people in Iran that are converting to Christianity quietly and hopefully in secret and so forth uh, on an unbelievable that's scale at this particular point in time. So it's happening. And I would just say this as we kind of close up. I've been thinking about this, and the last part of my book, Plundered, I go into spend half the chapter talking about the Christian roots of this nation and finally conclude that the only way we can get back to a constitutional republic and mean it and make it stick is if we reaffirm our Christian belief system here in this nation and have a Christian foundation. It's just not going to work otherwise. Exactly. Amazing discussion today. Again, get the book, AmericaPlunder.com. AmericaPlunder.com is the main website. There's lots of links from that to many other websites that uh, Dr. Mike Kaufman has. We'll have you back on soon, but the green agenda under Obama, as I said, we will be faced with eco-communism if Obama gets back in of the worst kind and the destruction of the economy, the destruction of our nation state, and the plundering not only of America but the whole world. Thank you, Dr. Mike Kaufman. Back tomorrow with Chris Lattery. 